Friends, I am Dr. Amdekar. In this video, I am going to give you a totally different view of pain in general and highlight the importance of several videos that my colleagues did related to pain at different sites. Well, if you look at the title of my video, the pain is inevitable in life. Friends, Dalai Lama once said, pain is inevitable in life, but suffering is optional. I started wondering, what does this pain and suffering really mean and what he means by suffering is optional? Friends, pain is the body's alert system and it has a purpose. But what is the difference between pain and suffering? And then I started looking at the physiology of pain and I realized that pain is a multi-dimensional experience where there are major three components of this experience. The one is of course a sensation which we all talk of as pain. And we know that we have a damaged tissue with pain receptors and then the pain is transmitted via nerves right up to thalamus and then on to the cortex where it is perceived as pain. That is one aspect of sensation. But two other important aspects which together make it suffering. What is the next component of this multidimensional experience? And that is how do you react to that pain? which is known as an emotional component of sensation of pain. You become sad, you become depressed, you become angry, you get them frustrated. Every such action which is emotion based worsens pain and therefore at a cortical level the pain and emotion are interrelated and pain and emotion worsen each other. This is important. And what's another third component of this multidimensional experience? And that is affective component. What is affective component? How do you deal with this experience? How do you deal with this pain? And there are three aspects which we decide whether we will suffer severe pain or we will just accept it as a mild tolerable pain. And what are these three components of affective factor of this experience? The first and the foremost is expectation. When I fall down, I expect pain. And when I expect pain, then I attend to that area of trauma. And therefore, my expectation and my attention makes me feel pain. And further, my tolerance decides how severe I react to that pain. Friends, that's what Dalai Lama said. Pain is inevitable in life, but suffering is optional, which means you have to have a control on your emotional and affective component. And if you really don't react to it badly, don't feel sad, don't get depressed, don't get angry, don't get frustrated, and you deal with it properly, which means that you improve your tolerance and you don't attend to it. Friends, when you have a headache, you apply balm over the forehead and you know that almost always relieves headache. And how does it relieve headache? Simply by your focusing attention away from that headache and then you feel relieved. Having said this, now we understand what is suffering and that. Why did I mention this? Because pain has no quantitative measure. When a patient shouts with pain, I feel that he must be having severe pain. But I am not very sure whether he has a pain at all. And that is a challenge of pain. Of course, my colleagues have described very well that pain could be difficult to even localize anatomically. We know that a child up to four or five years of age cannot even localize pain and he just cries and you will have to understand why he is crying and of course the most common cause of crying is pain. And then my colleagues also discuss various types of pathology 
Acute inflammation is easy to make out because there is often fear, swelling, fear, swelling, tenderness. But chronic inflammation or vasogenic pain, neurogenic pain or psychogenic pain, referred pain, so many types of pathologies. And of course, when there is some capsulated organ gets stretched over a long time, like a liver or like a lymph node, you get slowly worsening pain due to stretch itself. And when you have a tubular structure and that is irritated, you get a spasmodic pain or a colic pain. We know all that very well. But today in this video, I wanted you to focus on how it is difficult to quantify the measure of pain itself. And this is important because one type of pathology of pain is a psychogenic pain. And we need to also address that properly. Having said it, well, my colleagues did talk about abdominal pain and we know that abdominal pain can be very frustrating to a clinician. But I want to assure you that even a functional abdominal pain can be suspected very early in the course because the functional abdominal pain or any functional symptom for that matter comes up only at a convenient time to the patient and at other times when he is busy doing something or if he is enjoying some act, then the pain is never felt. It's a psychogenic pain that's a common uh, physical as well as a psychogenic factors together. And it is not rare to see chronic pain like fibromyalgia or like a restless leg syndrome where science cannot pinpoint the exact cause but it is an interaction between physical factors and also psychological factors. Having said this, we have discussed already uh, from various of my colleagues how abdominal pain is important and sometimes it is impossible uh, because clinically there is nothing to look at like a vasogenic pain, a sudden vasculitic pain or a pain of an intestinal ischemia because of a capillary leak occurring after the recovering dengue fever and similarly a neurogenic pain. And I recall a young adult who complained of a right lumbar pain and he was trying to convince us that it's a different type of pain. It's a burning pain and it's going horizontally across one rib. And sure enough, he was trying to give us a clue that it could be a neurogenic pain and he came out with a, a herpetic vesicles where the next day burning pain or a shooting pain is classically neurogenic pain. And then when you come to headache, of course, don't forget various other structures of the skull, including sinusitis, dental part, and there could be many other areas other than intracranial compartment that cause headache. When it comes to backache, friends, backache is getting common in children as well. Of course, it's very common in adults and as the age advances, Sometimes it could be very sinister, but today even children carrying a lot of load of books and on the back uh, and a bad posture to maintain while working on a computer or a laptop, etc. Uh, make them also come out with a backache and we need to be very careful where it is coming from. Of course, my colleagues also talked about chest pain and chest pain is not only the plural pain, but even a cardiac pain like an aortic stenosis or a cardiomyopathy and don't forget other mediastinal structures which also can cause chest pain. And when it comes to leg ache, then we know that the leg ache could be not only muscle or also the bone or a periosteum and leukemia is something that you should not forget. But it's easy to make out because when you have a, a legs and body are paining and if you massage the muscles, if one feels better, then it's the tired muscles and no other pathology at all. Whereas all other pathological pain like myositis or a periosteal pain due to leukemia, the patient does not like to kind of press over the areas which is causing pain. So be very careful about it. And then of course, joint pain. Not every joint pain is sinister. Not every joint pain is not chronic arthritis. But it could be simply a traumatic synovitis or it could be even far different like a reactive arthritis. And don't forget even leukemia can mimic arthritis. 
फ्रेंड्स देन वी डिड टॉक अबाउट डिफरेंट साइड्स ऑफ पेन एबडामिनल पेन चेस्ट पेन हेड एक ऑफकोर्स लेग एक जॉइंट पेन एंड सो ऑन बट इन दिस वीडियो आई वॉन्टेड यू टू अंडरस्टैंड देर आर इमोशनल कॉम्पोनेंट्स एंड एफेक्टिव कॉम्पोनेंट्स एंड आई वॉन्ट टू स्ट्रेस दैट अ साइकोजेनिक एबडामिनल पेन और साइकोजेनिक हेड एक इज गेटिंग मोर एंड मोर कॉमन इन द मॉडर्न एर एंड इट इज should be our endeavor to suspect it very early in the course of disease today i see abdominal pain after a month having done all kinds of tests including endoscopy and even a good history can make us suspect it psychogenic pain and you get into all those details well friends this is a different aspect of pain i wanted to talk about in this series of lest we forget and i thought i'll rather impress you on this aspect other aspect my colleagues have already have been talking very well about you i hope you are enjoying this summary of what we have done over a long time in this series of lest we forget and please spread this message let more and more people take advantage of my colleagues and uh, myself trying our best to educate people thank you very much